Good morning. It is Saturday, June the 20th, the first day of summer. We're going to take a tour of the garden to see how it's coming along, but first, as I always like to do, I want to say thank you to all of those that, that have subscribed to our channel. If you've not subscribed, we would sincerely appreciate it. You really, you know, I'm not going to say that you have to watch our videos just because you're subscribed, but we need subscribers. We're having plenty of views on our channel. I'm really amazed at how many views we get. But for some reason, perhaps it's content, <laughs> who knows, uh, and maybe it's trying to look at this old fat man's face that you don't like, I'm not certain. But we don't have a lot of subscribers, uh, and it would be great for you to support us by just subscribing. Uh, as I said, we have more than enough views. It's just the subscribers that we lack. And we are growing. Actually, July, we will have had the channel up and running for one year. And we, as I said, appreciate it. But as I said, I'm going to take you down and we're going to do a tour of the garden. But before we start down to the garden, I'm going to show you what we're growing on our deck. Uh, we do grow a lot of plants on the deck. Uh, and I propagate a lot of stuff. In this pot, this is our carrots. And this is just a regular flower pot. If you go back and look, we have a video on raising produce in a small space. But this bucket full of carrots, we have harvested carrots out of here twice already. And they are absolutely gorgeous carrots uh, they're getting a little big but i've got to get them out as well only one of them went to seed and as i keep saying it's important very important that you save seed there's not any other carrots here for these to cross pollinate with so they should stay true and that was an heirloom variety I believe those seeds originally came from Baker Creek as well. And these puny little things here that are being eaten to death, that's our eggplant. And I got those, I started those from seed I saved last year, but I got those out real late. We've had a lot going on this year. For those of you that don't know, this channel is my channel and my sister Pam. Pam's husband, we buried him this past Monday he finally lost his battle with cancer and that's why you've not seen her on here she has had a really rough spring and I'm still my first squash plant still producing squash and it's in a Lowe's bucket just a cheap little bucket that I bought at Lowe's and filled with potting soil I had to put a cover over my strawberries and that's to keep the birds off and we have some rather large strawberries in there I said in a previous blog that the berries weren't real sweet but that was simply human error I was pulling the strawberries when they first turned and I have found that if I leave those berries on there for about two days when they're red and when they get red all the way to the top of that stem that comes off the plant, if I pull those and slice them, they're red all the way through and they're just as sweet as they can be. And I have started some celery from the roots of celery in the window and put those out in the pot here. We'll use that to cut on to, rather than buying celery at the store, we can just as it gets larger between this and the white, we should be set on celery for the rest of the season here. And of course the wife always likes to have her flower pots here. And so we've got flower pots on the deck growing. We kind of like having it like a jungle out here. And this was a proven winner. This is a sunflower. It's called Sun Suncredible. And you don't have to prune it. Uh, it is going to stay small. It is the 2020 Proven w Winter uh, Sunflower from Proven Winters. And uh, we're enjoying that thing for sure. All right. 
that about covers the deck but I will show you this was the green onions and for those that know my wife is disabled and she is unable to to get down to the garden so by having these right here by the back door uh, when she's wanting green onions for a meal she could just step out here and pull them out of the pot those that are in the garden will be saved uh, just for regular storage onions I'm really surprised at this Chinese white celery I've never grown celery before but these seeds came from Baker Creek heirloom seeds and they are doing very well a little hard for me to film them uh, because I didn't want to go inside the fence so I'm hanging over the fence and lowering the camera but hopefully you can see it the five little zucchini plants did bear but then they stopped blooming I think a lot of that has to do with the drought we're in and most everybody's getting rain but we can sit on our deck and we can watch the storm clouds come up day after day after day and they'll go to the left of us, to the right of us, or they'll simply pass right straight over and never a drop of water. Fortunately, I, I've been able to water the garden. The little yellow crookneck squash, I'm still having to hand pollinate it in order to get anything. I did go in and trim out a lot of these leaves because I knew it was close and if you'll see I'm just actually breaking the big leaves off I'm wanting to let the air flow through it and I do tend to let my squash get a little larger than most people but I know that if you're going to preserve your summer squash especially if you're going to can it or even freeze it you do not want to freeze the seeds uh, they just turn to mush so the way to do it is to cut it in half and take an ice cream scoop or something and scoop all of the seeds out before you process it for canning or before you actually go in and put the little cut up pieces in your freezer bags or our favored way actually is to can it we tend to have the freezer full, so it's nice to have things that we can just store in the pantry. I don't know if you can really tell it or not, but this was my late mustard greens. That's mustard greens up against this insect barrier cloth. Uh, and I have my kale in here. This is all coming out this week, and I will be recycling this cloth. It should be good for several years. I try to take care of this stuff. But these mortgage lifter tomatoes have just amazed me. They're growing so fast. They're better than three foot high. And they're just here on this fence. I still have to get over into the blackberries here and weed them and pull that aggravating little vine that just goes wild in the garden. I'm just going to have to take and bring some mushroom compost and uh, I'll probably put some cardboard underneath them and throw the mushroom compost on top of them. And these little tomatoes are supposed to get about a pound a piece. Now there's no way that vine right there, all of those tomatoes could be a pound a piece. There's no way it would break the vine itself over. So may have to thin those a little bit uh, in order to keep the vines healthy. There's an old gala rose that it is not a patent rose. It is just a, a little cheap rose we picked up at Walmart several years ago. It just continues to bloom. And my cabbage, uh, I'm going to have to get in here and pull some leaves. A lot of this, of course, is bug damage, I'm sure. But also a lot of it is just that it's so dry. But I've got to get it taken care of. And I do now have a, a cloth to put over it. Let's see if I can show you some of them little black leaf hoppers. Yes, on the back of that leaf, you see those little black bugs? That's what we refer to as leaf hoppers. They eat the plants from the back. So I've also got to take time 
to put a little diaminaceous earth in a spray bottle mixed with water I buy the food grade and cover those and they're eating up the radishes but the radishes are ready to be picked so I've got to get in here and get a bunch of them pulled out the wasabi are finally making radishes seems like it's going to take them a little longer these this is a little section of blue lake beans they're doing great and they're blooming and they're actually setting on little green beans probably within a week or so we'll be eating those and as I said in my other post because of COVID-19 it was very difficult to get seeds and things so I left these little onions in the ground because they were blooming and I want them to go to seed the seed from here will probably be my onions for next year some more cabbage plants and these are not as bad so I would say that is bug damage up there but I know how to take care of it and as I said in a post on Instagram yes we have an Instagram account I'm blown away by these green beauty sweet peas and we are letting them get full and even though they're getting full the peas if we pick them before they get too mature they are absolutely just as tender as they can be bottom of this pea we take the knife and just cut where this bottom edge is here because that does tend to have a little string in it even though they're not supposed to but I would gladly do that any day we uh, fixed a casserole last night it was a cheesy pasta with chicken and for the green in it I picked a full large not a small large serving bowl that you would put a meal in for four or five people off of three plants it's just a, just as I say all the time amazing and this is my late brown Kentucky wonder pole beans and at the end I planted some more of the Italian beans the Roma twos this is some more tomatoes and yes every little piece of okra came up so there is some major and I do mean major thinning to be done there so let's move over to our other section which is truly our COVID oh I guess I should show you my little sage plant here and it has really been attracting the pollinators unfortunately the squash has it don't know what the difference is okay as you can see my sunrise bumblebee cherry tomatoes here on this piece of fencing are going wild and I probably have more in there than I should I have a small space so I don't exactly abide by the rules these are my hillbilly potato leaf tomatoes and they're beginning to get quite large and in between them because I want to make as much use of the small space that I have I've got some more cucumbers uh, the first ones I started in cups and planted here on this trellis and they are really really taken off they're gonna have this trellis covered and I have no idea what these cucumbers are because of COVID-19 as I've said many times before we couldn't get seeds so we had to resort to ordering things off of Amazon these seeds are cucumbers cucumber number 10 that's not what we ordered so we ordered some slicers and we ordered some pickling cucumbers these came from China but uh, I planted the seeds direct in the ground and they're doing quite well I took up right here at the end this little patch here at the end of this row and that was our spinach I left just a few plants across the aisle there and as you can see they're in bloom they've been covered with pollen that will be seed for this fall on the back side of my cucumbers I'll be pickling a lot of these so I direct sowed quite a bit of deal in here not all of it came up but more than enough came up to to provide the deal we need these little beans have suffered mainly from the drought possibly from the ground 
uh, I may have them in the wrong kind of ground but they're they're coming along and I do see bloom buds all in there so hopefully we'll have a few Roma 2 beans I absolutely I call this my little COVID-19 section I worked my butt off getting this in there was just a little walkway mode on the back side of this fence which was my garden that I've had for a number of years the rest of this look like all of this over here so I have cleaned it out cut it out but some of the larger trees that I took down are sprouting up and I'm constantly having to take out sprouts but that's not a problem here are my beets and the little beets are finally starting to make and I've got to take some of those out so that the others can continue to grow and the drought has affected my apple limb teepees here but I'm happy to say there is still green growth on them I'm not sure they're gonna die those are my blessing trees and that's what I refer to them down here on these I have cucamelons and I've put a cording up for those to come up and that's on both sides we do finally have some little tomatoes setting on uh, they're very small at the time current time but they'll they'll come on and produce I just had an extra tomato plant so I stuck it at the end now one thing I do do and I'll be back out here to take off this limb if you look you'll see that I tend to really prune the bottom of these I don't want anything touching the ground so I prune them up I even broke all of the bloom buds off that came out first because I didn't want those tomatoes down next to the ground I am going to and I keep saying it but hey life happens I'm going to take on this bottom here put some more agricultural lime on top of this mushroom compost and then I'll be putting some straw underneath there after I get it worked in but I'm quite proud of these little tomatoes they're growing in the shade and they get some sun but when you're an urban gardener you have to make use of what you have it's like any homesteader though I don't consider myself a homesteader I am a gardener but you have to make use of what you have never never say well it won't grow anything because it's in the shade you'll be surprised what you can grow if it's getting some sun these tomatoes as the sun moves across the sky probably are going to get maybe on the far end down there they'll probably get six seven eight hours of sunlight these up here they'll do good to get four yet they're just as healthy as the ones in the sun this is my late lettuce I put it in here and yes there are some flowers in here there's some late English sweet peas that are just for flowering for pollinators down here on this trellis but I did go ahead and put in some butter crunch lettuce this will be my late lettuce and it's most definitely in the shade down here in the corner well that's it for our garden tour on June 20th 2020 we've shown you what our COVID-19 as I call it garden is uh, if it hadn't been for COVID-19, I would have been out at the historic Cumberland Gardens with a much larger garden on Pam's farm, and she and I would have been farming that. But between Pam's husband's cancer and COVID-19, this has been a very hard year for everybody. And hopefully 2021 will be much better. I'm not going to say it can't get worse because things tend to do that sometimes. But let's all say our prayers that that does not happen. And once again, I want to thank you for watching. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We're not asking you to commit to watching all of our videos, everything that's put out. But hopefully there will be something that will interest you. But it is important that you help support us by subscribing to our channel and asking others too. Let's promote gardening. 
gardening is so important. It gives us food security. It gives us peace of mind. Uh, you, you get into the garden and you forget your worries. And if you think I'm wrong on that, you just try doing some gardening and concentrate on what you're doing. Uh, growing vegetables, or maybe it's growing flowers, trees, shrubs. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You need to be gardening. Thanks, and have a great day. And we really do hope that the good Lord blesses you in the coming days. Thank you.